Good morning, everybody. It is 2.20 a.m. Saturday morning, and my coffee's lukewarm. So much for the coffee report. I know I'm in tune with the Spirit of the Lord. I pray and repent daily. I pray and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, transgressions, and iniquities, my disobedience. Help me to be mature in all things, especially in self-control. It's one of the gifts of the Spirit that's mentioned in Galatians. The Spirit. Now, this is a tough teaching. I went right to this hat right away. A son, a placing, Ephesians 1.5, a placing, a son, not adoption. Christ in you dwelling. That's what we're going to cover today. Now, way back in the beginning, 44 years ago, when I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I also hikamo shundied. I gave praying praying in tongues, uh, a name, my own personal name, I came up with Hikamo Shundai. So when you hear me say Hikamo Shundai, that's tongue speaking, uh, speaking in the spirit, speaking with a prayer language. And I believe there was 16 languages when they came down out of the upper room that were heard. Uh, human nation languages from different nations. Jews from all over had come to Israel to uh, observe Passover, Pentecost, that particular time of year. They were there and they say, how is it that we hear from these Galilean fishermen our native language? And it covered everything from Rome to Egypt to Babylon to, in other words, uh, I think you can number 16 human languages and these Galilean fishermen were glorifying God in a language they hadn't learned or didn't know. And uh, the people from that country or that major city were hearing their local language. Now, I said all that to say this. Pentecostals would say that's the sign of you being born of the Spirit or indwelt by the Spirit. I don't want to discourage anybody. Personally, I believe you can be born of the Spirit, have the Spirit dwelling in you, and that is important, without Hikamo Shundai. I think real intelligent people, high IQ, have a hard time humbling themselves far enough to let the Spirit take over their voice, vocal cords, tongue, mouth, and because it sometimes your lips stammer and it Personally, I it sounded like baby talk to me, uh, goo goo gaga whatever when I first got it, and then the more I exercise the gift, and some people believe it's a gift, the more I exercised Hikamo Shundai, then it turned into a language, and my guess is hearing other people from other nations, I'm speaking some kind of ancient language. It was along the Euphrates River, Babylonian, Medes, Persians, Assyrians, something in that area, because Aramaic, some form of ancient Aramaic is what it sounds like to me, and I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm just making up an idea, because the Hebrew language came out of Assyrian Aramaic, okay? We know that. It's not Arabic, it's Aramaic with the M sound, all right? Hebrew came out of Aramaic. Aramaic is the mother language of Hebrew. 22 letters, figures, Hebrew figures, plus five were added later. All right, four minutes. Here we go. I am going to start in the Gospel of John, red letter. Uh, and we know that the red letters in the Gospel of John is uh, the Lord speaking. He's admonishing Nicodemus, who is a 
and I put it the, in this Revised Standard, 1952, the kind of the title above chapter 3, John, the third chapter, Nicodemus visits Jesus, and I wrote there, ruler, teacher of Israel. That's what Nicodemus is. Okay, and Nicodemus, a, a ruler of the Jews, verse 1. I'm jumping because I have to cover a lot of time here in four minutes. Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God, and then he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Two things he cannot do, see it or enter it, if uh, he is not born. Now, born of what? Uh, down in verse 5. The Lord speaks again. I add womb, born of water, and I womb water. Scripture plainly states first the natural, then the spiritual in the creation plan. All right? Born of the natural, born of the spiritual, born of womb water first. Nicodemus thinks cardly. He says, Well, how can you enter back into your mother's womb at my age and my size and be born again? All right? But the Lord's trying to get him to be, being born of the Spirit, born of the water and the Spirit. And then a little further down, born again, born of the Spirit is Spirit, all right? So it is with everyone that is born of the Spirit, down in eight, and uh, then uh, you are a teacher of Israel. That's why I wrote earlier, a ruler of the Jews and a teacher of Israel, speaking of Nicodemus. And the Lord tells Nicodemus, you must be born of the womb water and then be born of the spirit. Okay, now here's the tough part. Now I turn to Romans, uh, the apostle Paul. That was the Lord speaking to Nicodemus. Now we go to Romans, the eighth chapter. Hang in there with me, trying to make a small point. But you must know that you must know that you must know and no one can convince you any different. Do you know if you have Christ dwelling in you, Christ anointing dwelling in you, the Spirit? Are you born of the Spirit? I don't care if you don't speak in a prayer language, but you do know you've had a spiritual experience and an indwelling of the spiritual experience in your mind heart in your spirit soul, in your conscience. No one can tell you any different. You've had your spiritual experience, and that spiritual experience is in your mind, in your heart, and you remember it for all of your life. Okay, verse chapter 8 of Romans, verse 9. That's why you must read so different areas in Scripture become familiar to you. Back and forth. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, back and forth. This word verifies the word. Truth is found in repetition in twos and threes and four. True witness, major doctrine, locked in major doctrine. Eight. Got eight minutes. Chapter eight of Romans, ninth verse. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If the spirit of God really dwells in you. I'm reading Revised Standard, RSV. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. That's the tough, hard part. I'm a spirit teacher. I'm a truth teacher. I'm reading you the Word of God and trying to open it up to your understanding. You must know that the Spirit the Spirit of Christ dwells in you or you're none of his. It's that simple. It's that plain, okay? And I have my doubts as to some people that are going to church, reading the word, and they still say Jesus everything instead of Lord Jesus. One of the signs is you're in love with the word. You're in love with the spirit word. Those two words go together. God is word. God is the one spirit. God is spirit. Spirit word, you put those two words together. You have a love for the spirit word, and you come to maturity and start calling Jesus Lord of you and your life, your mind, your heart, your soul, your conscience. He's Lord in maturity. Saint sons coming to maturity. Saints, all right. 
I don't want to chase that rabbit. Verse 10, 8, 10 of Romans. But if Christ is not in you, although your body is dead, but if Christ is in you, although your body is dead, it's going to return to dust. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Are dead because of sin. Your spirits are alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. There is dwell, dwell, dwell three times right here through 8, 9 through 11. So you major doctrine. You must know that the spirit of Christ or the spirit of God dwells in you. You've been born of the spirit, Nicodemus. That's what we started out with back in the Gospel of John. Now I'm going all the way to, uh, all the way to Ephesians, back and forth, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. I'm reading in Ephesians, third chapter, and I must go quickly, it's 11 minutes. Ephesians, third chapter, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, and that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, filled with spirit word, filled with the spirit of Christ anointing, all right? And it surpasses, the love surpasses knowledge, but it doesn't do away with it. You're to grow in knowledge, all right? And the spirit dwells in you and you're full of spirit word, okay? And we end in Galatians one of my favorite sayings at 12 minutes, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? In the middle of the letter of Galatians, G-A-L period, just in front of Ephesians, third chapter, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Further down, did you receive the Spirit? I'm going to ask you three more times, a total of four. Did you receive the Spirit? Did you receive the Spirit? Did you receive the Spirit? And I didn't ask you if you hikamo shundite or spoke in tongues. I asked you, did you receive the Spirit? You must receive the Spirit to see or to enter the kingdom of God. A little further, here's another line. Have ye begun in the Spirit? Having begun in the Spirit. He's admonishing the Galatians. Having begun in the Spirit. Having begun in the Spirit having begun in the Spirit, okay? It's not how much knowledge you have. 12, 50, 13 minutes. Uh, The last one. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And there's a question mark here in the Revised Standard. He's asking a question. I move the question mark over and put in. It's faith in question mark now, just not faith question mark. Faith in question mark. In what question mark? In Christ anointing spirit word. Are you indwelt? Are you full of the spirit, the spirit word of God? He who is hungry for the word, loves the word, reads the word. There's a 98% chance that he is born and indwelt of the Spirit. If you're not reading, even though you may be going to church out of guilt, I know Catholics that go to church stone drunk out of fear of hell or guilt, and they don't read the Word or study or accurately handle or rightly divide the Word of Truth. 14 minutes and 10 seconds I must go. B. period Eugene Bear teaching you truth. Spirit teacher, teaching truth. Love you. Bye.